Oh, there's my dog barking. Hi, <laughs> Karen, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, and hi, South Park Church. Thank you for joining us as we are talking with Karen. Let me put my fancy little <laughs> banner up here. Talking with Karen. This is our first non-staff person that we're talking with, and I'm so excited. Um, it wasn't hard to decide to uh, ask you to be one of our first non-staff interviews because Karen basically should be on staff. She's at, <laughs> at church <laughs> every day. Um, so yeah, Karen, you're there. Tell us each day that you're at the church and what you're there for. Okay, I'm there Monday for Faith and Fitness. Tuesday, I'm there for Community Bible Study. Wednesday, I am there for MAPS or MAPS Steering. Um, Thursday is CBS Leadership. And Friday is Thrive or Faith and Fitness when there is no Thrive for that or if Thrive <laughs> is finished. Yeah. And then Saturday, I'm not there. And Sunday, I'm there for church. So when, when Karen and I were talking before we went live, I said, is Saturday really the only day you're not at church? You're at church more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. I, I remember when I first uh, started coming to South Park Church, and, and that's when I first became a Christian as well. I felt like drawn to be at the building because I just, wanted to be near as many people and near uh, the activity and stuff that was happening there. So I can understand why you got involved so quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And even though the building is not the church, we're the church and it can happen. It clearly has happened without right. us being in the building. There is a draw uh, when you're new to want to, I don't know, be in that house, be in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm glad that you've turned that desire to be in the building into serving. And so tell us a little bit, though, like what brought you to South Park Church? Like how did this all, how did you come to know us? Um, in August of 2017, I was there to see my son for the, well, it was during the kickoff picnic while he was with his safe family, host family. Yeah. And so that was one of the ones where we had like hot dogs and hamburgers and probably little games and some yep. maybe mm -hmm. face painting and popcorn. And yep. um, yeah, and yeah, I, I remember um, that it must feel exciting, but strange to see your son in an environment that you're not quite familiar with. Right. And yeah. did that help make you feel more comfortable when you saw how much he was enjoying himself? Well, I was actually there before he showed up. So I was sitting in one of the chairs in the cafe and I had tons of people coming up to me saying that, I, oh, you're Gabe's mom. I'm like, yeah, and I have no idea who you are. <laughs> <laughs> but that is great because you know then people were caring for Gabe, it wasn't just his safe family, right. host family, but it was people in the church. Yeah, it was their friends, and um, that was kind of the same experience for Bernie and I when we came to church. It was a little different. We showed up. It was where the cafe is now. At that time, it was called the Overpass, and there were mailboxes there. And we showed up there, and they're like, "Oh, you're the band director and his <laughs> wife," and we're like. Yeah, we are. How do you know about us? And uh, it was that because there were people that cared about us that were praying for us and right. um, thinking about us and telling mm -hmm. people, hey, they might come make that make sure that they know that we care about them. And so I'm glad that you had the same experience that yeah. we had, because it makes a big difference when you it feel does. known. Yeah. There's that quote yeah. that um, Pastor Eric always says, and I'll have to find it. because I don't I don't have as good of a memory as as so many of our pastors do. I can't just recite quotes, but he talks about um, feeling known is feeling loved. Mm -hmm. And so it's a Henry Nowen quote, I believe. We'll have to post that on our Facebook page and um, people can go back to it. So, so okay, so you show up at South Park Church um, to see your son. What made you want to make it part of your life? It really never happened until 
I would say when I went to the great banquet in October of 2017, but I always knew who Jesus was, but never fully believed in him. So when Gabe was with his host family, we would pray over the phone. And when my prayers got answered, I'm like, hey, this guy is real. He's, <laughs> he's here to help. And, but I still never really started following him till I attended the great banquet. I'm so glad you brought up the great banquet. I want to just say hi to Jeff and, and Pat, Pat is my mom, uh, that are watching that have said hi. I know more people are watching. Please post in the comments if you are. I know my mom went to the ba great banquet. I was able to be there with her. Um, I don't know if Jeff's gone, but I know a lot of people in our church have. So I'm glad you brought that up because that is, it's a retreat from like Thursday night until uh, Sunday afternoon. It's held at another church, but a lot of our church members are part of it. And it really does meet you exactly where you are in your faith walk. So there's people that have been followers all their life that go. And then there's people that are, that know about Jesus, but haven't made them real mm -hmm. in their life. And uh, everyone walks out of there with a, with a better understanding and a closer love of Jesus. So um, my mom, Pat says, great banquet was awesome. And it was, yes, it, was. it was so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And um, yeah, so, so you go to the great banquet and I think it starts to be real. It starts to be tangible. You see God answering your prayers and you mm -hmm. also, the nice thing about that banquet, you probably got to hear other people's stories and you recognize right. that yeah. we're all walking in brokenness and we don't mm -hmm. have to be perfect. Yep. We're all walking in this together. Yeah. And, and I think that that is like a misconception of, churches and sometimes we do that ourselves you know because we we look so good we make ourselves look so good on the outside um but there's so much going on in everyone's lives everyone's mm -hmm. walking uh with different hurts and struggles and celebrations and we just have to be open and honest with each other and so in a retreat setting it gives it a little bit better chance to do that but um okay so you go to the great banquet and now you're back to South Park Church. Did you decide, well, I already know about this church. This is a church I'm going to start going to. Or what made you start to attend regularly? Well, I had so many friends that I had met through not only Great Banquet, which also the same people, a lot of them are in South Park Church, but also because of safe families and just all those staff that's there, they were so welcoming and helpful. So you already felt like you knew people. It yep. already, already was a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I just, I love hearing these testimonies, but then what's really cool is, you know, Eric, Pastor Eric always, or lately, has been saying, and will continue to say, this, this particular quote of his, we dream of a time in the near future when every one of us is so excited about God's invitation that we cry out, send me. Uh, and he wants that for everyone in our church and we all want that. So what has God invited you to do? Um, he invited me to serve with the children on Sunday mornings at South Park Church in Wonderland. Then I got an email from the former MOPS child care coordinator to take on the extremely large role of the MOPS child care coordinating position and also the kids for CBS leadership on Thursday mornings. I responded by taking both of these positions, mostly to show the kids at a young age how to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That is incredible because you're, you, you weren't a teacher, right? No. You weren't like, ah, kids are, super easy, right? No. So it was scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you still said yes. Yeah. And I think that that is really a biblical response. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people that in the Bible that are scared to say yes, and eventually say yes. Sometimes it takes them longer. Sometimes it doesn't take them as long. And for you, it didn't. You just said, okay. And mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we can follow your example because there's a lot of times that I think, oh, like I know that needs to be done. God, are you really calling me to that? Can't you call somebody else instead? 
-hmm. but that's what I was he, thinking through the whole situation. Yeah. Can somebody else do it? I don't feel like doing this. So what have you learned from it? What are things you learned about yourself? What are things you've learned about God? That God is always there no matter what. And um, even if it's just through the little things, he's there to help and he's just pray and he'll, it, it'll, the answers will come in his time, but you'll eventually get the answers that you want. May not be exactly what you want, but he'll answer. Yeah. And have you found that it's easier to be with, you know, like kids are easier or it's not as scary as you thought? Or did you find like, wow, there's, there's a lot I need to learn about kids and it's growing you? Well, I've always had a thing for working with kids, but it's working with the adults too. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. So I had to recruit all of the workers for to take care of the kids, which was not easy. <laughs> no, and uh, what people don't know is be, it's not just a matter of making a phone call and saying, hey, can you you know do this? We are very careful with the kids in our church mm -hmm. uh, ministries. And so we make sure that safety is number one. So that meant, you know, you had background to checks. <laughs> deal with us. We had to do background checks. You had to do reference calls, uh, follow up, make sure mm -hmm. that they knew that they had to come. So so many organizational things that you did. And um, it was, it's, like you said, it's a huge job. I right. was a mob coordinator uh, when my kids were young. And I remember that was one of the toughest jobs the mop ed mm -hmm. coordinator, what you're talking about. You know, we keep saying mops, mops. I want you to know uh, those of you that are watching and not quite sure what mops is. Again, I'm gonna put a little banner up here. Mops is mothers of preschoolers. Um, and it's a really awesome uh, international organization. And it's for moms uh, of birth through kindergarten age kids. And it really gives them a chance to, um, come together it's not it's a christ uh you know focused organization mm -hmm. but you don't have to consider yourself a christian or you don't have to be a church goer to go and mm -hmm. it is a place that a lot of moms start to you know meet jesus meet others that know jesus and and then come to know him themselves but that's not you know the goal is to have these moms together to have time that they usually don't get when they have little ones. And so mm -hmm. what Taryn does, being the mop ed coordinator, is essential because it gives moms a break to be able to be with other moms and their kids be in a safe place. And uh, name some of the things that you guys do with the with the little mop ed kids when they're when their moms are in the room discussing things. Um we have there's just like playtime. We have a lesson planned out for them a craft, snack. Um, there's movie time if they want, if the kids get kind of, I don't know. Um, Antsy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's movie time. Um, they can go down and play in the gym. So there's a lot of curriculum that I have to try to set up also. Yeah. And, but what's great is that the, the moms know they're not just dropping their kid off and the kid's just going to sit and watch TV or play, you know, unsupervised. Like the kids are getting something out of it. So both of my daughters were part of the Mop Ed programs. And I, I know that those were um, big foundation to their faith. And to know that Jesus loves them at an early age. And I love that that was your in initial motivation was to take these positions because you wanted to show kids and event also the adults um, what Jesus does, his hands and feet. And mm -hmm. so I love that that was your motivation. I'm so thankful for you. Thank you. So does anybody have any questions while we're still talking to Taryn about MOPS, about CBS, about, um, gosh, what else? Uh, faith and fitness. Let's talk about faith and fitness a second while we're waiting. Give a shout out to those uh, exercise girls and guys I'm the youngest come. one there <laughs> <laughs> and you it's so fun they do um you guys do the Leslie Sansone walking mm -hmm. away the pounds uh yep. and that's what my daughter my daughter 16 year old does when she has to do workouts for her um PE class at home so 
I sometimes try to do it too. We have all those. But um, Faith and Fitness meets Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You mm-hmm. guys do a devotional, right? Yeah. You pray together. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then you do exercise. So are you still receiving emails with like verses and a little encouragement from each other, even though you guys can't meet together? Occasionally we get emails from e- from each other. We're sending, I mean, it's not all the time, but we do occasionally get Bible verses or pictures or things like that to encourage us. Yeah, to spur each other on to keep mm-hmm. keep moving. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and so that if you guys want um, a low impact uh, aerobics type thing when we're back meeting again, try it out. It's what, what time does it start? Does it start at nine nine fifteen? Uh, it starts at nine, but people start showing up about nine fifteen nine thirty. Yeah, I just know I'm there to open the door some of those <laughs> days and 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 welcome everybody in. <laughs> But that's a really fun thing to do if, if that's something that you're interested in. And then CBS is a large organization. Of, it's called Community Bible Study mm-hmm. and meets there. So for Community Bible Study, you are you part of the study or do you do child care work for that as well? I sub occasionally. I'm part of the study and I do um, AV, audiovisual tech. Oh, I just awesome. started doing the sound this year. You're full of surprises. <laughs> Look, look at all these things. And for those of you that check your kids into Wonderland, uh, Taryn is the one that sets up our computers half the time for us. That too. too. Right? So, yep. yeah, you know, what's so neat is that um, all those little things, if you were to add them up, you know, it might be like a little thing here, a little thing there, but, but they make a huge impact. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you didn't do the AV for the study or if you didn't set up the computer or if you didn't, you know, have the volunteers there for my pets, all of those things. Um, it makes the church run. All of us mm-hmm. doing our part is what makes the church the church. And right. uh, Jesus is proud. God is proud of us when he sees us all working together this way. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to thank you for being our first non-staff <laughs> interview. And if you um, came in watching us late, this will still be on our Facebook page and we'll put it on our YouTube page and you can go on back and comment and we'll answer questions for you guys or um, share it with somebody. Again, MOPS is up there. If you know of a mom that would be interested in joining MOPS, you can visit our website at that address there. Is there anything else you wanted to share, Taryn, before we head on with the rest of our day? I don't think so. Well, I just want to thank you for being around on Facebook when we're doing all this stuff and <laughs> commenting and just, I feel like even though we're not together, I feel like we're together. Mm-hmm. So thanks for being that. No and say, yeah. And everybody says hi to Gabe too. So I, he doesn't need to come on camera, but tell him we're all saying hi okay. to him too. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys all for joining us today. Especially thanks to Taryn. If you're interested in sharing your testimony on our Facebook page, I'd love to talk to you. You can email me. Um, oh, and Alberta, let's say hi to Alberta because I know Alberta. Alberta, Alberta, uh, I know Alberta is one of my office workers. Yes, and you guys are friends, and oh, so I'm glad that you could join us. Um, but yeah, if you would like to share your testimony on uh, Facebook and and share how God has invited you to be sent, uh, please send me an email or send us a message on Facebook, and I'll be in touch, and I'd love to talk to you too. But Take care, Taryn. I hope you have a great day and take care, everybody else. Okay. Bye-bye, guys.